Hey y'all, I'm Stacy. And I'm Tom with RV Texas, y'all. Welcome back. Today we're in Jacksboro, Texas, northwest of Fort Worth at Fort Richardson State Park. Fort Richardson was one of a series of frontier forts in Texas post-Civil War. In fact, it's the northernmost of those forts in Texas. So this is a great place for history, also great for camping and hiking. Yeah, we've seen a lot of wildlife here too as well. So stick around while we show you around Fort Richardson State Park. So as we pull into Fort Richardson State Park, let me tell you a few things about it. This was actually purchased by Texas Parks and Wildlife from the city of Jacksboro back in 1968, and it opened as a state park that same year. It's currently 454 acres. This is the headquarters. It has a small store with souvenirs and books. Yeah, and this was a vending machine again for the wood like we saw at Fort Parker State Park. Really, really cool. Yeah, it really is. It's very convenient. This is Quarry Lake, sits right behind the headquarters and it's great for fishing. Uh, it's stocked with catfish, bass, and trout. There is no swimming in Quarry Lake, which yes, did used to be a quarry, but we'll show you in a bit where you can go swimming while you visit. So Fort Richardson State Park includes a trailway that connects two areas. The main section of the park where the fort uh, is and where we're staying most of the camping is down here on Lost Creek. Um, there is a trailway called the Lost Creek Reservoir Strait State Trailway that's a nine mile one way hiking, biking, equestrian trail uh, that you can take. It follows the creek up past Lake Jacksboro, around the reservoir, and it comes out here in the other section where the Oak Ridge Trail is. And there's a swimming area here as well as some tent camping. So, you know, if you were into hiking and you wanted to have your main camping down in the main portion of the park, do a nine mile hike one way, tent camp overnight here, they do have some tent camping, and then the next day hike back or whatever, you could do that. That's an option, which is kind of interesting. So we're gonna go in and see what this section of the park has to offer. Talking about secluded, wow. We're, we went down this one-way road about a quarter mile, and this is the first campsite. It's campsite number 10. And tons I mean, of shade. Tons of shade. Water uh, only. Yeah, and it's a tent camping site. I mean, they may allow you to put a pop-up here, but there's no power. Uh, Beautiful little site. Yeah, it really is. It, it would sure be quiet. There's no doubt about it. But we'll we'll see what else we can find here. <laughs> okay, so to clarify, these are tent camping sites only up here in the north unit. No RVs of any kind, including pop-ups. These are water-only sites, but how beautiful is this? This is the restroom for the camping loop. Uh, Seem to be in great shape. And this is all right off of the Oak Ridge Trail. Look at these campsites. I mean, absolutely beautiful shade, lantern hook, fire pit, picnic table. Here's your swimming area right here in the north unit. This is on Lost Creek Reservoir. At the end of that trail I was telling you about, the nine mile Lost Creek Reservoir State Trailway, this is where it'll bring you. What a great way to end a hike. Wow, how cool is this? So in Jacksboro here, they have a nine mile path, a trailway that leads from the main section of Fort Richardson State Park to the north section of the park. And along that route, we've discovered this old remnants of a bridge. Now, the Butterfield Overland Mail Route came through here on stagecoaches back in the 1850s, and that's when a bridge was originally built. 
Part of it was washed away in the early 1900s. It was rebuilt in 1905. And they've left some of the remnants for folks to, to get a sense of the history here. You don't usually see stuff like this. This is a pretty cool find. All right, so we just finished a great lunch yeah. at Hertz Burgers. And that was incredible. And let me tell you, hamburgers is all they have. I mean, it's it's a single, a double, a single with cheese, with cheese right? double with cheese. Grilled cheese. And grilled cheese. And you can, I mean, they come with lettuce, tomato, mustard, mayonnaise, and there's no fries here. You just get chips and a drink. And you could have jalapenos. I think that was the only add-on I saw. Oh, and it has pickles too. Yeah. But they're outstanding, and they make them while you wait. And totally. They've been here since 1916. Yep. Uh, they've been using the same grill. We understand. Since for... 1916. Yeah. Now, one of the great things that we like to do is talk to a local. And while we were in Jacksboro. Someone told us about the Jack County Museum. What a great find. The house here is actually considered to be potentially the oldest house in Jack County, built in 1882. And that's the one in front, not the log cabin right there. That was like 1887. They've got old farm equipment, a complete history of the county, really cool stuff. And this is actually the birthplace of the Corn Club in 1907, which later became known as the 4-H Clubs of America. This is a community museum that runs on donations. It's free to visit. Just leave whatever you uh, like to leave in donation. Definitely worth a visit when you're in Jacksboro. Some really cool stuff. Yeah, the folks were really, really friendly there and made us feel like home. <laughs> Absolutely. This house, by the way, a lady lived in until the 1970s. How cool is that? Now headed back to the state park, on that trailway, you'll find the Chicago, Rock Island, and Texas Depot. Built in 1889 of local stone, this is Jacksboro's first train depot. And it's here because the trailway is a rails to trails project. The railroad used to run right by here. Now we get to the namesake of Fort Richardson State Park. And I gotta say real quick, this sign was not the original entrance. It was put here in commemoration of Texas's centennial in 1936. Wow. This is a fort that was built in 1862 in honor of General Israel Richardson, who died following some wounds in the Battle of Antietam in the Civil War. It was put here initially as part of the reconstruction post-Civil War, and then became a line, uh, the head of the line of forts across Texas that stretched from the Rio Grande to the Red River uh, to protect the settlers from Native American tribes. And during the Indian Wars, Fort Richardson was a vital player. These guys patrolled everything from here to 300 miles away in Paladuro Canyon. Wow, and this was the bakery we went through. Yeah, they said they baked six to 800 loaves of bread a day, 24 seven in wow. that bakery. Unbelievable. So a lot of what you see here is original, including this, this is the magazine where they kept the black powder. Look at these walls. Yeah, how, how thick are those walls? Four feet thick. Wow. They said this would be the place if there was an attack that women and children would come to barricade themselves in. I mean, it's got to be the safest place in the county to go to, no matter what's coming in. I'm telling you what, built in the 1860s and still going strong. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, Fort Richardson was uh, the largest battalion. It had the most men of any U.S. military installation in the United States. Unbelievable. This is a recreation of one of the barracks. The enlisted men would sleep here, two men to a bunk. So that's four men when you consider upper and lower bunk. Wow, I just thought one would be at the top and one at the bottom. <laughs> Not for the soldiers. They say conditions here were pretty rough. 
Same building, different end. This is the non-commissioned officers' bunks. So you can see they got a little bit better than the soldiers, but they were in the same building. It was pretty crowded at times, they said. Yep, but pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is the commanding officers' quarters. This is the only cottonwood frame officers' quarters from the Indian War period still standing in the United States. And the Waterworks Building, which is now the Nature Center, was built from salvage, salvage stones from the Second County Courthouse in the 1930s. Now, Fort Richardson only served actively for 11 years, but once the Indian Wars were over, so was it for the most part. Let me check it out. Heck yeah, <laughs> I love the sign already. Yeah. That is cool, and I'm gonna use the All Trails app to track our path here. Right. So I haven't done that in a long time, but... Oh. So Fort Richardson has uh, three miles of hiking trails plus the nine mile uh, trailway that we talked about. Most of the trails are less than half a mile each. And actually this trail, at this point on the trail, it reminded me of Garner State Park. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, with all the rocks and everything, but man, was it a beautiful trail, but it was a little difficult. Yeah, you know, they rate all of their trails either easy or moderate, and that one would definitely be in the moderate. Then you've got, you know, the restrooms uh, in the camping areas and also day use areas. This is the day use. What a beautiful area. Yeah, it really was. That um, Nobody there this day. This just this was a normal day, but nobody was there. And then we get to the cabins. And what's interesting here is the Fort Richardson State Park cabins also allow RV parking at each cabin. So these are air conditioning, air conditioned and heated cabins where you can also plug in an RV. And you'll see there's plenty of room here as we come around the building. You'll see where you can put the RV. So yeah, that's very unique. Hadn't seen that anywhere else. And then they've got some pull-through sites, they've got some back-end sites, they've got shaded, they've got open, just a little bit of everything here in this park. Yeah, sure was. say whenever you leave a campsite always make sure all your power is turned off and the box is closed so it's ready for the next camper and protected from the elements from the rain and stuff so some of the sites here are water only some are 30 amp and water some are 50 amp and water some are full hookups and they do have a nice dump station that's easy to get to This was a site that really stuck out to us, Site 17. It was beautiful, shaded in the back, long level site. It, it, was, it was definitely what I'd consider a premium site. 
but I just love the shade that so many of these have. That's for sure. I mean, we were there in the summer and it was very comfortable. Now this is awesome. Site 14 has its own little bridge with its own little creek. <laughs> wow. That is super cool. And a tent pad back here. Welcome to our campsite, site number five at Fort Richardson State Park. And I gotta tell you, one of my favorite campsites of all time. Absolutely, we had 50 amp hookup. Yes, we did. And water. And it was just beautiful, very private, uh, just rock wall looking down into the little creek there, awesome. Yep, it was a winner. <laughs> Beautiful day, golly. So now we're on to our next destination. We hope you'll subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and join us for the adventure. Until next time, y'all, safe travels. And happy camping. Bye. Bye.